What's up guys, Asian here again with another theory crafting video and today we're going to be discussing uh, the question of whether a 551 setup is better or worse than a 542 setup. Uh, so for those of you guys who aren't aware of the kind of nomenclature that I'm using, uh, when I say 551, I'm referring to uh, two five-piece sets, so that's the 5-5, five five. and then the one can refer to something like a uh, Monster Helm, or something like a Master's Destruction Staff, or a, an Asylum Staff, or something like that. Uh, but in this case, I'm going to be using it specifically to reference a five, two five-piece sets and a Monster Helm. Uh, and then 542 refers to a five-piece set, a four-piece set, and typically something like Minor Slayer, uh, Moon Dancer, Master Architect, and Fallible Aether, uh, and a two-piece Monster Helm set. Uh, traditionally for Max Orb, it's going to be Lambrus, although Scoria and Marineth and some other Monster Helms are kind of, uh, kind of in a pretty uh, becoming a more popular choice, I should say, uh, across Max Orcs. So. Uh, that's kind of the big question that we've had. So a lot of people have posted on Reddit, on the official forums, have asked me, uh, what, why aren't you using 551 builds on your on your build videos? Why aren't people using 551? Uh, Alcast uh, has a 551 build on his Maxwork site, uh, so clearly isn't you know he obviously wouldn't put that down if it didn't pull good DPS. Uh, so my answer to that is yes, 551 does pull good DPS. However, uh, if you if you decide to go see Alcat's builds, his first build is a 542 setup, not a 551 setup. That's the build that he suggests that you use. Um, and it's kind of the same way across uh, multiple theory crafting and multiple uh, ESO players that post out their builds. All of their Magicka builds are always going to be, are mostly going to be 542. You're not really going to see 551 setups anymore. Uh, where the 551 setup came from was the change in Morrowind, I believe it was. Um, or it might have been Horns of the Reach, actually. No, it was Horns of the Reach, um, where 551 kind of became something that people were exploring because of the incoming nerfs to uh, the Thief, the Shadow, um, and all these other crit sets and things like that. So 551 was kind of explored uh, during the PTS phase of Horns of the Reach, um, and then they kind of uh, came at us when Horns of the Reach was finally released and nerfed a bunch of things that we thought were going to be good, um, and ended up completely throwing off 551 setups and it ended up being that 542 uh, still ended up pulling ahead of 551. Uh, so that's kind of where the origin of 551 is the best setup uh, comes from. Now there are some legitimate um, benefits of running 551 compared to 542. Uh, the big one being that 542 typically requires that you have that Minor Slayer uh, set staff front bar. Uh, so for Sorks it'll be your Lightning uh, lightning Staff or Inferno Staff, and for most other Magicka classes it'll be your Inferno Staff. So running 542 uh, is, you can't really do it if you don't have, for example, a Moon Dancer Inferno Staff on your front bar. Uh, obviously then it just becomes a uh, 532 uh, with uh, some random staff on the front bar or f an Asylum Staff, I suppose, uh, since uh, normal Asylum does drop the Asylum staves. Uh, so 542, while it does pull more DPS than a 551, is actually probably more diff more difficult to obtain the pieces for. Compare that to 551, um, where the one five piece set that uh, is pretty much common throughout all 551 builds is going to be Julianos. That's a crafted set. You can easily craft the weapons yourself in the trait that you want. If you can't craft it yourself, you can ask somebody in one of your guilds to do it for you. Uh, so 551, uh, the pieces are generally easier to obtain. Uh, for example, for Sorks, uh, the 551 setup that's most commonly um, recommended is Julian Necro or Julian Netch, depending on if you're running a pet or not. And uh, Necropotence is, can be purchased from guild traders, and Netch's touch can be farmed from Dark Shades 1, a very, very easy uh, dungeon to farm. Uh, so that that is kind of the benefit of running 551. You only need to have that one Monster Helm piece, so you don't need to farm for uh, two Monster Helm pieces, so you're kind of cutting down on the farming you need to do, uh, at least on the Monster Helm side of things. Uh, and you do it is easier to get the staves because you do have one crafted set there, uh, so you don't have to lose out on... Uh, trying to farm for a Minor Slayer uh, front bar staff. Uh, but the downside of using a 551 is that you're going to need jewelry for uh, your non-jewelry set. So for Netch's Touch or Necropotence, you're going to need to either get the 
uh, jewelry from the dungeons, which require you to go through it on vet, and jewelry only drops from chests and the final bosses of dungeons. Or you're gonna need to purchase uh, Necropotence jewelry, uh, purple or gold, uh, depending on how much money you have and how much you want to spend. Uh, so you do need to use jewelry for that, and uh, just due to that, uh, at least for Necropotence, you can get gold jewelry. I'm not 100% certain if Natchez Touch gold jewelry has been released uh, on the Golden Vendor uh, recently or ever. Uh, but if you think of it like uh, in that sense, it is uh, very difficult to get full gold pieces on a 551 setup because you do need to get jewelry from dungeons or from an overworld set, both of which uh, don't drop golden jewelry normally. You're going to have to purchase them uh, from the golden vendor or in the case of Necropotence, potentially from a guild trader, uh, typically for a lot of AP or a lot of gold. So that's kind of the downside of running 551. Uh, so... I'm just going to quickly go over what I did, uh, talk about what I did. So, uh, for my tests, my 5-4-2s are basically uh, Julianos or Necropotence. I use 2-piece Lambrus, 3-piece uh, Moon Dancer uh, with 2 spell damage and 1 Magic re Regen Glyph. That's going to be the same across my 5-5-1 setup. Uh, and I've used an Inferno Staff infused with a Shock Damage Enchant and a Nernhone VMA back bar with a Weapon Damage Enchant. Uh, now, for my 5 uh so I did 5-5-1, five, five, and in this case, let me see if I can find what I did here. So I used a Julie front bar normally, and then obviously I swapped out my jewelry. So for Necropotence, I did have a gold Necropotence uh, necklace here, so that I, I did use that. Uh, for Netch, I only had purple. Uh, so this would be what my setup looked like for... A 551 jewelry plus Netch, so I have my three Netch jewelry here. Then I had to have have so this is my five piece uh, Netch right here, and then I added in uh, shoulders. Or basically, this is kind of what I did. So I tried to use the helm as your my monster set. So I did three monster helms. I tried to test it out: Kina, Ice Heart, and Lambrus. And then from there, I had my three jewelry sets for my uh, Netch or uh, Necropotence. Two armors were Netch and Necropotence. And then I played around with my, Julie, my uh, remaining pieces here, jewelry, to make sure I had a 5-1-1 uh, setup. So five light, one medium, one heavy uh, setup there. I did have my Inferno staff here, Julie, uh, for the pet, pet parse. Uh, however, for the uh, non-pet parse, because I was using Netch and I did want to give it a little bit, as much of an advantage as I possibly could, I did use a Lightning Staff instead uh, for my non-pet parse. So this is kind of what I did for... Let me uh, swap that out. So that's more or less what I did for a uh, non-pet build, and I swapped this out for an Inferno Staff for the pet tests. Uh, so without further ado, we're going to swap over now to the uh, spreadsheet. Okay, so this is the spreadsheet here. We have four tests, Netch plus Julie, with Iceheart, Kina, Lambrus, and then just the standard 542 setup for the non-pet, and then I did Julie and Necropotence, again Iceheart, Kina, and Lambrus, and then four, uh, 542 here with the pet build here. We did six parses across all four categories here, uh, so that's 48 parses in total. We have our averages, our spread for everything involved here. So we can see here that the 542 setup on the non-pet build pulled on average about 34.3k, and the highest out of these three combinations for the 551 was Iceheart, which pulled 33.2k. So we were looking at about a 1.1k difference in DPS on average. That's about a, uh, if I'm doing my mental math real quick, that's about a 3% difference in DPS. Looking over at the pet build here, we can see the 542 setup for the pet build pulled 35.6 on average, or round up to 0.6. By contrast, the highest 551 setup for pets is going to be the one with Lambrus, not surprisingly because of the Max Magica, and that pulled 34.9k. So we're looking at a smaller difference, about six, 600 DPS difference, which, if I'm again doing my mental math correct, works out to be about a 2% DPS difference. So. 
542 still pulls ahead of 551, but you can see here from the numbers that 551 still doesn't pull that far behind. Uh, it is a 3% difference for non-pets and it is a 2% difference for pets, uh, so that's kind of what you're looking at in terms of DPS loss. Uh, it is noticeable, um, but it is it's not necessarily going to um, kill your chances of getting uh, into any sort of vet trials. Uh, knowing your rotation and knowing your build is far more important uh, compared to your gear. Uh, so anybody who is saying that you know 551 is pulling ahead of 542, uh, they are kind of a little bit misinformed, potentially using outdated information. Uh, 542 is pulling ahead of 551 in every single scenario that I can think of. Uh, so whether you're a Magsork or a Magicka Nightblade or a Magicka Warden or any other sort of class, uh, 542 is typically going to pull ahead of 551 uh, normally by about 2 to 3 um, percent. The only exception that I can possibly think of there is Magplars, melee Magplars when you're using dual wield uh, for that 552 bonus uh, and there's kind of a melee Mag Nightblade as well using Master Architect and Soul Harvest that's kind of a those are kind of the two outliers there. Those uh, don't really fall into the neat 551 versus 542 category. It's kind of more of a 552 versus 542. Uh, so that's kind of a, a separate video that I'm going to do later on. Uh, so that's basically it for this video. Uh, so the conclusion here is that 542 is still considered best in slot. A 551, while it can still ver still pull very good DPS, is not best in slot. Anybody who's saying it is best in slot, um, best, uh, just tell them politely that 542 is considered best in slot. Uh, so that's it for this video. Hope you guys found it informative, and I will see you guys in the next dungeon.